What's up guys? <laughs> Sorry. It's March 15th, so if you guys are like, you know, a lot of people are like, Ellie, where the freak have you been? What's going on? So if you haven't really been on this channel for a long time, or if you have, then you have seen a weird pattern maybe with my uploading. So typically, end of year, middle of year, like summer is where I kind of upload a little bit more frequently. And then beginning of a new year, I like, don't upload for a while and um it's like i the only explanation that i have for that is one school usually gets a little overwhelming in the second like semester and so trying to keep up with that transition is a little bit difficult i typically like find work if i'm not already working a job um in the second semester it's just like i don't know i don't know why that's just what happens um it's a pattern that i've noticed in my life it's like beginning of a new year is like jobs busy time with school and then second this could get like a little deep and personal and i don't mean for it to so i'm just gonna say this very sparingly but like usually like the beginning of a new year i definitely go through some like seasonal depression um and so there's not like a lot of motivation to do these kinds of things but then usually typically as the year progresses then i get a little bit more motivation and excitement for things again it's just like a seasonal thing i don't know some people also please don't mind my background um i half made my bed i didn't fully make it so just don't mind that i should have just made it for the video but i didn't so just please don't mind that anyways a lot of people and when i say a lot i mean like three <laughs> Um, have like told me that they miss my scary story videos. So I picked out a couple to read for you guys today and that's what I'm gonna do. It's not really like a seasonal thing anymore. I just really like scary stories and it's so fun to tell them. So um, one of like my favorite topics when I read scary stories or like learn about them is glitch in the matrix because I think they're like so interesting that like these people just have these weird experiences where it's like almost like a glitch that happens in the world um so i don't really know what the explanation for glitch in the matrix is especially like as a christian i don't really know how you what the explanation is for that that would like i that aligns like with my beliefs so um I would like to do more research on that because I have literally no clue. I just find it so interesting, like the phenomenon and everything. That's going to be the first story I read and then I'll probably do a paranormal one and then maybe like just like a scary human interaction story if I have time. So, um, this one, this one is not super long. This one is the glitch in the matrix story and it says my dad's life was saved by a man in the glitch. Alright, my dad was saved by a man from an accident site, but he doesn't remember the incident happening at all. In fact, he says he never left his house that day. This was from 10 years ago. I was in school and used to live in a small town in India. My dad had a business for which he had to frequently travel to the national capital. The only train that would arrive back to the town within the same day from the capital would arrive in the nearest city 20 kilometers away by 10 p.m. So, this one time he was coming back from the city after arriving from the capital. My dad's brother, my uncle, was also in the same train, but he decided to come back home in a bus. And since my dad had taken his scooter to the train station, I'm sorry, that's just like so, so cute. It's like just, okay, sorry. He was going to ride back home. There was a neighbor's kid who asked my dad for a ride back home and my dad agreed. There were no street lights working that day. It was very dark and the area was full of industrial vehicles. Unfortunately, there was a big trailer parked on the main road diagonally. With no street lights and a speed of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, my dad's scooter, oh, this must mean like a motorcycle or something. I was thinking like a razor scooter. <laughs> Bumped right into the trailer and the front of the scooter literally crushed. It was a horrible accident. They never, the neighbor's kid was luckily and magically safe and didn't get a single scratch. Some vehicles kept passing by, but no one stopped to help. Then came a big black SUV. A man in his late 30s stepped out with the neighbor's kids help put my dad in the car's back and took him to the nearest hospital. 
Meanwhile, my uncle's bus was passing by the accident site and he recognized the scooter was my dad's, so he left immediately for the nearest hospital to check if anyone admitted dad. My uncle met the man who helped my dad, asked for his name and where he was from, thanked him for his help, and the man left. The doctor said had the person not helped bring my dad to the hospital, he would have died of blood loss. My dad was in the ICU for 25 odd days. He recovered in the next four to five months, and we really wanted to thank the man who helped. Since my uncle had already asked for his name in, my, in place, my dad asked around, and one of our relatives happened to know the man since their wife and that man were from the same town. My dad and mom went to go meet the man, and he had the same name, same place of stay, same car, and he said, thank you for bringing these flowers and sweets, but I don't remember helping you at all. In fact, the date that you're mentioning, I wasn't out of my house that day at all. We were all so spooked, and for some time we kept thinking this had to be some joke or something, but my uncle confirmed that he saw the exact same man. Has to be the biggest glitch of my life. To this date, we still don't know who saved my father. Interesting. So, my theory is either that, or he's just like he doesn't want credit. Um, he's just trying to just like, hey, like you don't need to do these things for me, you know. I don't know, maybe he just wants to stay anonymous. I don't know. That's weird. That's weird. Okay, wait, this one's really short. Should I just read this one, this really short one? Okay. I just want to see this. It sounds so strange. The title is A Car Just Teleported in Front of Me. For a little context, my landlord is selling her house and I rent the upstairs apartment. She's hosting viewings pretty much all day, so I gotta find something to do in this cold and snowing weather. So I'm going to the library first, then the mall. Now I'm at a corner at a cross street to put money on my bus card. Now when I'm crossing the street, I look both ways twice. Looked to my left and saw a car was coming, but it was far enough for me to cross. Looked to my right and there are no cars coming. So I went to cross and as I get to the middle, I look to my right again. All of a sudden there's a white car in front of me. Happened maybe 10 minutes ago. Someone said like, could have been someone who just turned the corner, but they said no, lol. If it did, there's no way that would have been in front of me so fast when I was already crossing. The corner, it would be turning from us pretty far down the street. Huh, weird. weird. All right, now we're gonna go to no sleep. So let's find, this one sounds crazy. This is the first thing that popped up. This is, oh, this sounds so weird. Okay, uh, I'm gonna be coming up with like, uh, <laughs> what word am I thinking of? Different words, I don't know. Villains. I'm thinking of a specific word, but it's not coming to my brain for the swear words in the story. So if I like say something like freak, heck, gosh, darn, then just, yeah, that's just me. So it says, I died in 1987. So why the freak am I suddenly alive again? <sighs> okay, bear with me because I'm still learning how to use gnarly gizmos of the 21st century. It's been a hectic month. Oh. And I guess I've, you know, been trying to overcome the trauma of returning from the dead. But that isn't even the worst part. I've scarcely cr scratched the surface of the past month's horrors. I've not even told you about the hollow man yet. A new friend, most of my old ones are retired or dead, which is totally effed. <laughs> told me, I'm freaked, sorry. Told me about this subreddit. First of all, the internet blows my freaking mind, man. A few geeks and freaks talking about it back in the day, but this stuff's cool now, huh? Beats me. I'll suspend my cynicism, cynicism. <laughs> because this might be a good place to talk about my experience. I've been reading about the occult practice of veil breaking, whereby a deceased individual's soul returns from the world beyond the veil to its earthly body. I think that's what happened to me, but who the freak would bring me back after nearly 40 years? I do have an itsy inkling, but we'll get to that. All I know with any sort of certainty is that my return has been totally harsh, has totally harshed the universal balance. There are forces that seek to eternally torture me, so I need to return my soul to the realm beyond the veil before that happens. What the crap? Okay. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. You're probably confused. That's very true. I'm very confused. Let's talk about February 5th, 2023, the day on which I returned to the land of living, 36 years after dying. 
dude, I wasn't even psyched to be back. The process of resurrection is a heck beyond explanation. And I thought death hurt. It's worth pointing out that I was flattened by a hit and run driver named Billy Riley, a high school rival of mine. That's a horrible way to go. And as I remember, as I lay in a pool of blood and the taste of my own, well, never mind all that. <laughs> this is the craziest written. The point is that my resurrection was worse. I felt and still do feel like a reanimated creep, like a zombie man. And I was always a stoned slacker, but I just don't feel right. It's the kind of existential dread I used to feel when I was high, but I'm stone cold sober and the stuff isn't transcendent or eye-opening. It's terrifying. I'm acutely aware of the fact that I don't belong here. When I woke in 2023, I was lying on a pavement near the spot where I died in 1987. The houses looked a little different, but my surroundings were identifiable. You don't forget your own death after all. I was wearing the same denim jeans and a leather jacket, though they were a little dusty and tattered. Bloodstained too, I realized, but my body was absolutely fine, not a scratch. After a few unsettling conversations with perplexed strangers, I realized I'd woken up in the distant future. My first thought that it would have been so great if some egghead had invented a time machine so I could go back a decade to understand. Then I realized I don't, even, I don't even want that. I need to send my soul back. It's not as simple as dying according to the laws of fail breaking. If I die in the wrong way, my soul might be lost forever. I might not be able to get back to the afterlife. I need to find the veil breaker, and I suspect it might have been the hollow man, my petrifying pursuer. He approached me in a scantily lit back alley towards the end of my night shift. I worked at McDonald's thanks to John, the guy who told me about this subreddit. Let me tell you something. It was emotional to see a brand I recognized. You have no idea what it's like to wake up in a foreign world. It's terrifying. As I tossed out bin bags, I was vaguely aware of a dark figure sitting on his haunches. He watched me from the shadows of the alley's dead end corner. I ignored the seemingly homeless, homeless man, but he finally stirred when I prepared to walk back inside. The shadowy observer rose to his feet, revealing himself to be, well, over eight feet tall. What is this story? When he unsteadily tiptoed into the light, I shrieked. He had a crooked posture, leaning in a lopsided manner, and I suddenly realized that I recognized him in a demented sense. He had a contorted version of Billy Riley's face. Oh. His jaw hung abnormally slackly, and his eyes were black, colorless spheres. As he left his hovel, drowning my screams with the sound of his hissing mouth, I noticed something even more horrible. The hollow man had been curled atop a pile of flesh and bones in the corner of the alley. One of his victims, a bloodied, gutted woman, was still alive. Help me, she croaked. What could I do but gawp in horror? I continued to back away from the haunting spectacle unfolding before me, but Billy kept approaching. Hello, Ron, the man groaned in a demonic voice. I've been looking for you. B Billy? I cried. He smiled, blood dripping from his crusty lips. 30 years of suffering, but now you're home, Ron. And when they see you alive and well, my name will be cleared. I fumbled with the fire exit door handle, but it was locked. Freaking Nadia, I whimpered. Still, can I resist my hunger? Billy whispered, placing a hand on my shoulder. I screeched and turned to face the monstrosity which towered over me. Its enormous mouth grew large enough to swallow my head, and I could still see Billy, and I could see the inside of Billy's empty body. A cavernous chasm <laughs> begging to be filled. The hollow man. Perhaps I've already lost too much to be redeemed, he hissed. There's no use in keeping you alive. I dropped to my knees and rolled to the side before Billy could engulf me. He snarled, snatching at my McDonald's jacket, but I slipped my arms out of it and fled into the night. Since that night, I've been living on John's sofa, praying that the alley abomination doesn't find me. I'm currently researching the world behind the veil, desperate for a solution. I know Billy is the key 
to saving me, but I don't think he's human anymore. My soul is doomed. What did I just read? What did I just read? I, there's no way this is a real story. <laughs> no way. You think this is, okay, it says series up here. So do you think this is just like a, I'm not, everyone's like, get a silver, something silver. Okay. Guys, <laughs> that is a really interesting story. Very interesting. And I give credit to the person who wrote it because it's very well written and very, um, voluptuous <laughs> i can't think of the word it's very poignant like you can see this like the setting of everything it's a good story now if it's real <laughs> i'm not gonna discredit this person though okay it was a really good story though good job to reddit user the eagle strikes let's go to let's not meet and read an interesting let's not meet story this is called, I think a man has been watching me, and tonight I met him. Hope this story belongs here. I currently live in an RV in my mom's driveway. My town is just larger than small, and it's relatively safe. Lots of rich people, doctors, live here, so it's kept very nice and crime is relatively low. I never expected something to happen to me, but tonight I met a man and he was a reminder to me to always lock my door. Sometimes I forget to lock my door, even while sleeping, and it's never been a big deal to me because my town is generally safe, but I'll be locking my door now. That's a good idea. Always lock your door. It was 2 a.m. and I took my garbage outside to the bin. When I turned around, I noticed a figure in the dark walking toward me. I started to quickly walk away, but he spoke to me. He was a short man, probably in his 50s or 60s. I'm 23 and female. He started talking to me about my living in the RV, and I took charge of the conversation to shut it down quickly. He told me what house he lives in in his name. He was being polite but very creepy. I'm sure nearly every woman gets what I mean. That older man kind of creepy and too polite to you because you're a pretty young woman. He told me I should come by his house sometime, and I'm like, uh, yeah, sure, maybe one day. Have a good night. And I walked back to my RV and locked the door. I figured he'd have left, but he didn't. I don't have a curtain on my window right now, and I could hear him pacing outside my window and mumbling to himself. I was just hiding, but I wanted to lock the door by my bed. It doesn't open at all anyway, but I decided to lock it all, to lock it regardless. I got up and looked outside and he was staring right at me. He was waving his hand at me to get my attention, walking right up to my window and acting so erratic. It was so different from the guy I just met. I locked my door and he watched me, and after that, he left my window. I f it felt like he was still there. Five or so minutes pass, and then he's knocking at my RV door. I don't know if he tried to get in or not. It's just a flip handle, so I can't see, so I can't hear it or anything. I just waited there for an hour before I grabbed a knife and ran into my mom's house. I'm definitely getting a taser and a gun. I think he'd been standing across the street watching me. There's no reason for him to have just been outside my RV at 2 a.m. I think he's been watching me too. People shouldn't really know that I live in the RV. Walking down the street, that's not something I take notice of. I've only even started to pay attention to RVs and driveways since I started living in one, and still I don't notice if people are actually living in them or not. Maybe I'm being naive, but it still makes me wonder if he's been watching me, seeing that I live in the RV every day. I don't go outside of my RV. I'm a homebody. So he'd have to have been staring into my RV to really even notice someone was actually living in it. Terrifies me. I was so afraid of his intentions. He makes me realize that even though I'm in a safe town, I'm still a young, pretty woman. I'm a target on men's lists. It sucks this is our world. It sucks that there's men out there who are like this towards women. That is very, very true. It is really sad. And it also totally is something that happens to men too. Like there's creepy women out there um, who do this to like young men. Um, and there's creepy men out there who do this to young women and older women too. But it's just like particularly a more known thing for this to happen to young women and you're right it is very scary it also would scare me 
Ooh, I hated the part when you said, and this person's not like watching the video, but when they said like they, they looked out the window and they were staring right at the person. I literally have nightmares about that and I get so scared. I usually keep my like window over there shut, like my curtains shut at night. Um, and even though I'm on the top floor, I get scared that I'm gonna look outside and there's gonna be someone standing in my yard just staring at me. We also have like a huge window in the front of our house. And so when I walk down the upstairs hallway, the window's right there. And so at nighttime when I like go to the bathroom, whatever, I get scared, I'm gonna look outside that window and there's gonna be someone standing like in the street, just like, like that's freaking terrifying. So that's so scary. Um, yeah, but anyways, these stories were really entertaining. Um, I wanna read more, but we're already like, at, I've already been filming this for 23 minutes, so. Um, I'm going to hop off. I'm going to sign off. Hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. I don't know. I think I have a planned video that I'm going to be making Friday. And today's Wednesday. So, we should be having a new video relatively soon. Editing, you know. Hopefully, we'll get all that done. But, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Um, sorry for taking forever to upload at the beginning of the year. Always. But, I love you guys. I miss you. Peace out.